Hello, this is Mr. Reynolds, and today we are talking about, uh, actually I want to review some of what you did uh, last week, last Monday, you, uh, you looked at parts of a long bone, and actually that's referred to as a macroscopic view, not microscopic, a macroscopic view of the bone, okay? Um, so, and last week you learned that the shaft of the bone, the long shaft, is known as the diaphysis. 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 You learned that the bulb-shaped ends on the ends of the bone, each one is called an epiphysis. You learn that on the ends of the long bone, which you've experienced if you've uh, eaten chicken uh, chicken bone before, on the ends of it, it's really, really, really smooth tissue, okay? It's, it's going to form a joint with another bone, so it's supposed to cut down on friction in the joint. And this is called articular cartilage. Okay, and you've seen the word articulation before. That means to form a joint with another bone, so articular cartilage. Okay, and actually, that's because of its location. It's actually a type of cartilage that's known as hyaline cartilage, which you've seen this word before. And this, in infants, well, yeah, in in babies born, this is this is what's present before bone tissue. This is the precursor. Of bone tissue so in hyaline cartilage bone will get laid, bone cells will move into that area and basically make it make it hard um, um, calcium carbonate some calcium phosphate may uh, just just like stone so bone gets laid down there okay um, on the on the shaft on the outside of the shaft let's make this a different color we'll make this purple on the outside of it is a membrane, a sheath of membrane that goes around the long bone. Okay. It goes around it. It contains um, uh, contains blood vessels, some nerve endings, and this is called the periosteum. It's a membranous sheath around the shaft of the bone, periosteum. And if the bone breaks, if there's a break in the bone, then uh, blood vessels carry nutrients there more blood comes there so it swells up it hurts it's red um, and it starts laying down more bone tissue i want to say about 40 percent of the of all the tissues laid down within the uh, the first four or five days okay then after that it slows down and it takes a total of about six weeks for a bone to heal up Okay, so people in a cast for about six weeks. Okay, and actually that's a whole lot faster than some of the other connective tissues. Okay, bone is bone is the fastest. Okay, uh, out of all the connective tissues, there's there's blood, <clears throat> there's um, cartilage, there's like tendons is dense fibrous connective tissue, there's areolar tissue, there's adipose tissue. A couple big names, hemopoietic tissue, which is making blood. We'll look at that in a minute with the bone marrow. And uh, reticular endothelial tissue, ooh, which you saw in uh, some lymph nodes. Anyway, uh, the bone tissue is one of the faster ones healing of those. Uh, with um, uh, If someone turns their ankle, okay, and they damage some of the tendons and ligaments that are in there, uh, it does not heal up 100%. It might heal up 95%. Um, second time, which makes it more prone to be turned. Second time they turn it, eh, it heals up 90%. Third time they turn it, eh, it heals up 85%. So if um, if you're someone who plays, for example, basketball, you probably know some people that they have to tape up their ankles before they even go out onto the court because they've turned their ankles numerous times. Okay, And each time you turn it, it's more likely that you're going to do it again because it's not strong. It's not as strong as it originally was. Um, one neat thing about this bone, since it heals up really, really strong wherever it was broken, if this bone is broken again, it's in another place. Okay because it's not going to break in the original spot because that's 
that's stronger than it was before. Okay. Um, let's make this a different color. We'll make this more light blue. Uh, there's a cavity in the middle of the shaft and all the long bones, and cavity means it's open space in there. So the second word is going to be cavity. It sits in the middle of the long bone, middle, medulla, medullary cavity. Okay. Um, some of you wrote down, some of you labeled this as endosteum, which wasn't one of the words, but you saw it on some diagrams. And let's make that the light green. Okay. The endosteum is the inner lining, just like periosteum is this outer purple lining. Okay, the endosteum is the inner lining, which is right inside the medullary cavity. Okay, so, um, like I said, the periosteum is outer lining, and the endosteum is the inner lining inside the medullary cavity. It's the tissue that's inside that. All right, uh, the next structure actually make it a little darker yellow. Um, inside the medullary cavity. If it's yellow, it's going to be yellow marrow. If there's yellow tissue there, it's yellow marrow. And that is mainly fat tissue. Okay, nice fatty substance. Um, if there's some... If there's some red marrow, which there's probably, which there's some, you're mainly juniors and seniors, there's going to be some at your age. Um, in a few years, there won't, won't be. In 10 years, 10 years ago, there was most of the medullary cavities on most of your long bones were red marrow. And the red marrow, because they are making red blood cells, okay? Um, right now, in some of your long bones, probably in your femur, some in your in your uh, humerus, uh, a lot of the irregular shaped bones that you have, your vertebral bones, your uh, hip bones, your rib bones, are real big in making red blood cells, and that's going to be filled with red, red marrow. Uh, also, one I wanted to show on here was um, on the end on the epiphysis. We're going to have, it's going to be look like looking into a sponge where there's a lot of open spaces in it. And so, hence, they call it spongy bone, where it's spread out. Okay. All right. Um, on the diaphysis, um, on the diaphysis, it's mainly, the bone is real close together. There's no spaces. Um when you studied Friday, you, you, if you saw an arrangement of an osteon, we'll go through this some more, but it was a layer of just bone real close to each other. It's called compact bone. Okay. Um, let's make this some more spongy bone down here, showing the spaces. It's filled up with red marrow, red hemopoietic tissue. Okay, and there's one more thing that you need to see here that affects that affects you all a lot at your age and where you've just come from. Um, let's make this. Uh, uh, let's make it. Uh, let's make it this blue. Let's make it green. Okay, for articular cartilage. Um, in the ends of the bone, almost to the ends of it, where the shaft pretty much meets the bulb-shaped end, there's a disc-shaped structure called the epiphyseal disc. D-I-S-K, the epiphyseal disc, okay? And this is known as your growth plate. This is where all of the bone growth takes place, right? Uh, you'd think if you're going from three feet to four feet to five feet, this entire bone, this entire bone is growing in length. It's not. It's just, it's lengthening here at the ends of the epiphyseal disc. That's it. This is where all the bone growth takes place. 
Um, if someone, if you're younger and you break your bone and it's close to the ends, boy, the doctors are taking a close look at your x-rays. They want to make sure this break does not go through your growth plate. Because if it does, we saw how this we saw how this healing takes place here in our original breakup here that we did. And there would be a lot of healing that takes place in here, okay, a whole lot. And anyway, if it goes through this cartilage, well, this all becomes bone now, and the growth stops. And the growth would be stunted in this one bone. And if this is femur, well, this one's going to be shorter, and your other one's going to keep growing. Um so like I said, they want to take a real close look and make sure that break is not going through there. Because if it is, they got to do something else. Um, okay, we're going to stop here with this.